Section 41 of Happy Days. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Marty on the Central Coast of California. Happy Days by A. A. Milne. A Slight Misunderstanding. George Turnbull and his old college friend Harry Peterson are confiding in each other as friends will over their whiskies and cigars. It is about three o'clock in the afternoon. George, dreamily, helping himself to a stiff soda. Henry, do you remember that evening at Christ Church College, five years ago, when we opened our hearts to each other? Henry, lighting a cigar and hiding it in a fern pot. That moonlit evening on the backs, George, when I had failed in my matriculation examination? George, yes and we promised that when either of us fell in love the other should be the first to hear of it rising solemnly henry the moment has come with shining eyes i am in love henry jumping up and grasping him by both hands george my dear old george in a voice broken with emotion bless you george he pats him thoughtfully on the back three times nods his own head twice gives him a final grip of the hand and returns to his chair george more moved by this than he cares to show Th thank you henry hoarsely you're a good fellow henry airily with a typically british desire to conceal his emotion who is the lucky little lady george taking out a picture postcard of the british museum and kissing it passionately isabel barley if henry is not careful he will probably give a start of surprise here, with the idea of suggesting to the audience that he, one, knows something about the lady's past, or two, is in love with her himself. He is, however, thinking of a different play. We shall come to that one in a moment. Henry, in a slightly dashing manner. Little Isabel. Lucky dog. George. I wish I could think so. Sighs. But i have yet to approach her and she may be another's fiercely heavens henry if she should be another's enter isabel isabel brightly so i have run you to earth at last now what have you got to say for yourself henry like a man by jove looking at his watch i had no idea it is really a poor old joe waiting dashes out tactfully in a state of incoherence george rising and leading isabel to the front of the stage miss barley now that we are alone i have something i want to say to you isabel looking at her watch well you must be quick because i am engaged george drops her hand and staggers away from her isabel why what's the matter george to the audience in a voice expressing the very deeps of emotion engaged she is engaged i am too late he sinks into a chair and covers his face with his hands isabel surprised mr turnbull what has happened george waving her away with one hand go leave me i can bear this best alone exit isabel merciful heavens she is plighted to another enter henry henry eagerly well old man george raising a face white with misery that is to say if he has remembered to put the french chalk in the palms of his hands henry i am too late she is another's henry in surprise whose george with dignity I did not ask her. It is nothing to me. Goodbye, Henry. Be kind to her. Henry. Why, where are you going? George, firmly. To the Rocky Mountains. I shall shoot some bears, grizzly ones. It may be that thus I shall forget my grief. Henry, after a pause. Perhaps you are right, George. What shall I tell her? George. Tell her nothing. But should anything feeling casually in his pockets happen to me if 
going over them again quickly. I do not come back. Then, searching them all, including the waistcoat ones, in desperate haste, give her, give her, give her, triumphantly bringing his handkerchief out of the last pocket. This, and say that my last thought was of her. Goodbye, my old friend. Goodbye. Exit to Rocky Mountains. Enter Isabel. Isabel. Why, where's Mr. Turnbull? Henry, sadly. He's gone. Isabel. Gone? Where? Henry. To the Rocky Mountains. To shoot bears. Feeling that some further explanation is needed. Grizzly ones. Isabel. But he was here a moment ago. Henry. Yes. He's only just gone. Isabel. Why didn't he say goodbye? Eagerly. But perhaps he left a message for me. Henry shakes his head. Nothing? Henry bows silently and leaves the room. Oh! She gives a cry and throws herself on the sofa. And I loved him. George, George, why didn't you speak? Enter George hurriedly. He is fully dressed for a shooting expedition in the Rocky Mountains and carries a rifle under his arm. George, to the audience. I have just come back for my pocket handkerchief. I must have dropped it in here somewhere. He begins to search for it, and in the ordinary course of things comes upon Isabel on the sofa. He puts his rifle down carefully on a table, with the muzzle pointing at the prompter, rather than at the audience, and staggers back. Merciful heavens! Isabel! Dead! He falls on his knees beside the sofa. My love, speak to me! Isabel, softly. George? George. She is alive! Isabel! Isabel. Don't go, George. George. My dear, I love you, but when I heard that you were another's, honor compelled me. Isabel, sitting up quickly. What do you mean by another's? George. You said you were engaged. Isabel, suddenly realizing how the dreadful misunderstanding arose which nearly wrecked two lives. But I only meant I was engaged to play tennis with Lady Carbrook. George. What a fool I have been. He hurries on before the audience can assent. Then, Isabel, you will be mine? Isabel. Yes, George. And you won't go and shoot nasty bears, will you, dear? Not even grisly ones? George, taking her in his arms. Never, darling. That was only, turning to the audience, with the air of one who is making his best point, a slight misunderstanding. Curtain. End of chapter 41. Recording by Marty on the Central Coast of California.